Hello, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening to everyone who's tuning in. Hope you're doing well and staying safe. On behalf of on behalf of E3 Student Conference, I'd like to welcome you all in our in our first session on the second day of the conference. My name is Mayar Tore, a senior year gas and petrochemical engineer student at Alexandria University. Please don't forget to drop your questions in the Q&A section below, and please keep the chat box professional and ethical. Without further ado, let us give a warm welcome to Dr. Hisham Salam, who will be giving us a session in, in breaking new ground in the study of Egypt's ancient prehistory. Dr. Hisham Salam is an Egyptian play paleon paleontologist and the founder of the Mansoura University Vertebrate Paleontology Center, the first vertebrate paleontology program in the Middle East. He works as an associate professor at the American University in Cairo and Mansoura University. Dr. Salam led the discovery of description of Mansourosaurus shahini, a species of sauropod dinosaur from Egypt, which has improved understanding of the prehistory of Africa during the latest Cretaceous period. His work has helped popularize paleontology in Egypt. Thank you so much, Dr. Hisham, for coming today, and the mic is yours. Thank you so much for this nice introduction. Uh, I'm happy here to share uh, with you some of my work. Um, um, I'm Hisham Salam, uh, working on fossils from Africa and uh, Middle East. Uh, so today we're going to break some new ground uh, from Egypt and uh, show you some, the pre some of the prehistoric life that we have been investigating. Um, so, as you know, Egypt is uh, famous for uh, pyramids and sphinx and other temples that pharaohs uh, built uh, back in days. But also Egypt is famous for prehistoric life, uh, mainly from different uh, geological time, uh, uh, that's recorded uh, in uh, Egyptian rocks or Egyptian uh, um, depressions or Egyptian sediments. So like dinosaurs and also uh, whales and ancient elephants and so on and so forth. Um, if we go back in time, you will see that Egypt has really great history of the prehistoric life that been um, discovered by foreigners. Uh, the first Egyptian fossils discovered in 1884 by the German uh, scientist. Uh, his name is uh, uh, George Schwanfurth, that he came to Egypt and went to Fayum, and this red box uh, show you the Fayum location. Uh, it's a desert. It's actually a depression uh, made by erosion and uh, actually recording uh, 40 million years old deposits. Uh, from that deposits, um, L1 Simons, an American uh, scientist, discover the Egyptian monkey, uh, 30 million year old monkey. It's his name, the Egyptopithecus or the Egyptian monkey. Uh, so he came to a uh, conclusion that Egypt 30 million years ago was something like that, tropical forest full of uh, uh, ancient elephants and monkeys on the trees, which became a, a branch of the old world of monkey that gave rise to great monkey, which is us. So this is Egypt 30 million years ago. And if you go further to the west, you will find a fabulous place of Wadi Hitan or, or the Valley of the of Wales. It's now it's a desert, but back in days, 40 million years ago, were actually a bottom of an ocean, uh, the Tithians or the ancient Mediterranean Sea. So this is Egypt 40 million years ago. But if you go farther to the south, uh, you will go to what we call it Bahariya Oasis, the land of dinosaurs. 
and dinosaur the Egyptian dinosaurs were discovered by a German scientist. His name Ermer Strummer. He came in 1912 to Egypt looking for mammals, but he his luck uh, led him to discover the first Egyptian dinosaurs from this wonderful expo exposure uh, or, or badlands. It's it's Bahariya Oasis. These rocks actually are uh, 95 million years old, which is the discover four dinosaurs from Egypt, uh, Spinosaurus, the famous Spinosaurus, the largest and the most ferocious dinosaur ever exists. And actually this is Egypt 95 million years ago. So Egypt went through different times with different ecosystems, with different actually prehistoric life. So, but until 2010, none of the Egyptian hold a PhD till I came back from Oxford as a first Egyptian vertebrate paleontologist for decades to earn a PhD in um, vertebrate paleontology. This vertebrate paleontology, I was a discipline, never been taught in Egyptian universities. Now we have changed the history. So I came back with different goals to train the next Egyptian vertebrate paleontologists and also install a well-equipped laboratory and also initiate vertebrate paleontology expeditions, establish collaboration with other scholars around the world, to publish our discovery in very prestigious uh, journals, and as you will see, and also expand vertebrate paleontology all over Egyptian universities and also communicate uh, our discoveries to uh, general audience. So I came back with a degree from University of Oxford in England, 2010, back to Mansoura University, my hometown university, to find out I was, all, I was only given a table and a chair. And they said, good luck with that. So I started from scratch. Uh, so this is, I was given part of a huge lab, very traditional lab. But as you're going to see, we're going to change that. Uh, so first of all, let me introduce my senior students. And I said, and a man at the Woody, they were the first girls to come to my uh, lab after I gave them a lecture about Egyptian uh, fossils. And they were actually inspired and they told me, they, hey, professor, I would like to work with you. To be honest with you, at that time, I didn't believe in them. But with time, they change all of my beliefs and they, mar they are my heroes now. So I with Sanaa Said and uh, Ayman Dawoodi and other students, uh, we went everywhere uh, in Egypt. This is uh, one of our track. Uh, so there is Mansoura up there, very close to the Mediterranean Sea. So we took our car and went all over Egypt, basically. But to be surprised, our car was not four by four car. This is my personal car. So this is my actually my friend's car. So this is our luggage. This is our tents, everything, including Iman and Sana inside this car. So we started our journey and we went to Southern Egypt in 2014 to meet our luck exactly. So we were digging a uh, first dinosaur to be dug by Egyptian. This is the material that we discovered. And this dinosaur this, uh, is going to make us famous in a second. So here are some bones from that uh, dinosaur. Uh, that dinosaur, that's, this is the uh, denary, um, the, le the, the left, the left uh, lower jaw. And this is the cervical vertebrae, the neck vertebra, uh, and also the shoulder uh, bone, and also some of the arm bones. So we published that discovery in Nature, Ecology, and Evolution in 2018. 
after that discovery, we were everywhere. They, let me introduce Mansura Soras Shahini, which is a very rare dinosaur to be discovered from uh, Africa. And actually, Spinos uh, Mansura Soras filled a gap in the history of uh, Egyptian uh, paleontology. So be, before the dinosaur went extinct in, in, uh, in, Asia, in, in uh, Africa, or in general, uh, there were no records from Africa at all. So Mansurasaurus was the first record of dinosaur from that time period. So this is what is really important. Actually, also uh, Mansurasaurus answer and questions about uh, questions about the paleogeography that there were dispersal between uh, Egypt, uh, African dinosaurs and uh, European European dinosaurs back then. Uh, uh, and also, the, as, as, you, as you see here, Mansura Sora Shahini is a uh, sorabot dinosaur, uh, dinosaur eat plants. And the dinosaur eat plants cannot fly or swim, so he has to go walking to Europe back and forth. So this is the first evidence between uh, dispersal between uh, African fauna and European fauna. And after Mansura Soros published, Mansura Soros were, went viral over everywhere. So BBC talk about it, and also National Geographic, CNN, and Reuters. And the, the Discover magazine choose, uh, choose Mansura Soros as one of the most discovery, the most important discovery in uh, 2018. And also get uh, attention of the uh, uh, president TCC in in Egypt and also uh, uh, where every everywhere. So after Mansura Soros being discovered, they uh, we get a really nice fund from the Egyptian government to do some field work and discover more of the Egyptian prehistory. Prehistory. So we went to Fayou which is a depression uh, very close to Cairo, like one hour driving, but this depression record uh, 30 million to 40 million uh, uh, old deposits. Uh, here is the geologic map of some quarries in, in, in red uh, dots. Uh, these quarries also in danger. Some of them really get destroyed by tomato farm. As you see, this site actually produced the oldest uh, quarry in Africa producing uh, terrestrial mammal. Terrestrial mammals like ancient elephant, primitive elephant, primitive monkeys, primitive uh, bats, primitive rodents, uh, all of the ecosystem living today back uh, is actually their ancestor in this uh, deposits. So the, uh, the, the, this one of my uh, students, we were, went there in 2014 to dig up some of, to save actually some of the, uh, the quarry. This is my tents, this is my car, and this is my students digging up uh, the old uh, fossils that dated back to uh, 37 million year old uh, fossils. There are some jackets, for you, you um, if, if you're wondering what's this white uh, gizmo, it's actually uh, what we call it plaster jacket. So we actually make a plaster over the fossils so we can uh, take it safely to, to the lab. Uh, and also do some screening, look for tiny, tiny uh, mammals. Uh, so we, we, we were able to save the green area, but we're still working on the yellow, but the red actually, unfortunately, were destroyed. Here is my students. Uh, uh, after uh, bringing stuff from uh, deserts, they working uh, in, in, in that lab. If you remember back then, the old lab, the old pictures of the old computer, this is the new facility that we built after the discovery of, discover of Mansura Soros. Here are some fossils. If you look at the bottom of the screen, you will see upper tooth of a bat that dated back to 40, 40 million year old. 
uh, and here is some monkeys and also some of rodents. Uh, our, our most recent discovery was really tiny rodent. We named it Safrutas. Catrani means Safrutas and Safrutas in Arabic name means really tiny thing that moving quickly everywhere. So it's actually a type of rodent that we successfully published in, in Berger. And here is some of the original material by CT scan pictures. And if you look at the scale, it's actually two millimeters. It's really, really tiny. So um, uh, it's very uh, nice to have. So this is kind of the mimic picture of what uh, Safrutas or Catrani Safrutas looked like back then. Uh, and this is the actually, the, this is the, the fossils, the actual fossils right here. But this is the recent uh, uh, modern uh, rodents that live in, it's the same size of Safrutas. If we move from the Safrutas and terrestrial animal, we're gonna go to Wadi Hitan to dive in together to the, to the ocean. Uh, very, very, very ancient ocean. Uh, so if we go to uh, Wadi Hitan, here is this, the red star uh, that's uh, located uh, Wadi Hitan. That's actually Wadi Hitan is really wonderful place. If you come to Egypt, please uh, go and visit it. You will never regret it. Um, and here are some fossils. This is 40 million year old lower jaw of ancient whale. The whale, the fossil whale that give rise to all of the dolphins and blue whales and etc. Uh, and here is Egypt uh, 40 million years ago fall of, it's actually, there were no Egypt. It's actually bottom of the ocean, fall of uh, ancient whale and also fishes. Uh, and here is my one of my heroes, uh, Sana Sayed. She is now a PhD student at Michigan University. She is my senior student. She was the first. She was the first female from the Middle East to lead um, international publication on uh, vertebrate uh, fossils. And she also recording at that paper, recording a new genus and species of catfish, really huge catfish, two meter long. Uh, we named it Carmutas uh, hitanensis. And uh, they actually uh, uh, also get attention of National Geographic and spoke about Carmutas and uh, uh, Sanas publication. Um, very recent, two months ago, we published a new guy, but this whale, not like a fully aquatic whale, this is a very primitive whale that lived in Egypt 43 million years ago, and he actually amphibious whale, amphibious in lifestyle, so he can swim and he can walk on land in the same time. We named it, uh, um, Fayumicetas Anubis. And Fayumicetas Anubis is a 40 uh, to 43 million years old walking whale. And the, the star the, uh, uh, of that discovery, one of my students, his name is Abdullah Gohar. He is a, one of the uh, bright students. Um, so here is the actual material that we discovered, part of the skull right here and also the lower jaw and some of vertebrae, one, one thoracic and one, one thoracic and one cervical vertebrae and some of the ribs. And we saw some of the shark bite marks on one of the ribs indicated that the uh, uh, Fayumicetas anubis war was eaten by small sharks. But uh, we named it Fayumicetas, Fayumi, uh, referring to uh, Fayum depression, uh, the area that we discovered Fayumicetas from, and Cetas in Latin means well. And Anubis is the species name for, uh, in honor of the, um, the god of death in uh, Pharaoh's time, because uh, Fayumicetas Anubis has really uh, lethal bite. 
And also Fayumi Sitas and Red actually uh, like fill in one of the um, uh, transform uh, fossils, uh, transitional form fossils in between the fully terrestrial well to fully aquatic well. So it, that's in between any kind of missing link. Uh, we were successfully publishing that uh, in uh, one of my one of the most prestigious uh, biology journal in the world, proceeding B Real Society, and uh, as a new genus and species of uh, very primitive whale. One of our discovery, but this is for you guys, but not distributed. It's actually uh, a very very old snake. And it's actually, we working uh, together with uh, a friend, uh, our colleague from Cambridge University now to publish that and very soon. And it is actually part of uh, Gigantophis. It's uh, an, uh, uh, an Egyptian old snake uh, um, that discovered in 19, I think 1991. Uh, or something like that. Um, I can't remember, but this is um, this one is uh, the largest snake ever exists. It's found in Southern America, Titanoboa. If you haven't heard about it, it's really huge uh, uh, snake discovered from Southern America. But Gigantophis is the second largest come after uh, uh, Gigantophis. Um, one of our luck led us to this quarry. This is a marbleized limestone quarry. Uh, I got a phone uh, three months ago about that there was a fossil inside one of the blocks. So I went there to find out that um, this is the, uh, the, uh, the quarry of marbleized limestone that we cut to make tiles and, and at kitchen tables and, and so on and so forth to find out that we have a crocodile inside of one of the uh, blocks. So, but the guy actually accidentally cut it. Uh, so we were lucky to have it. Now we are working on it. It's a 40 million years old crocodile trapped in marbleized uh, uh, limestone. If it's coming to media, please uh, wait for it. It's going to be a really nice crocodile. And I think it's a new genus and species uh, that lived in uh, ocean, uh, Egyptian ocean back then. Um, to go take you guys to different era with the Paleogene hyperthermals. So we're facing global warming today, but to read the global warming. Today, you have to read the past, the global warming. So we take you now to very, very, very hot uh, era. But surprisingly, we found actually a 56 million year old fish in very hot time. It's called P-E-T-M, Paleocene, Eocene Thermal Maximum. We dug the Egyptian or break the Egyptian rocks and find out this fish. This fish actually survived the one of the most uh, hottest global warming in the history of Earth. Um, so we um, kind of um, carefully dig up this quarry and they find out that we have really wonderful fossils and we published that in uh, a journal uh, geology uh, uh, in, 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 uh, in a few months. But uh, recently we went further to older deposits to find this really nice fish. If you cannot see the fish, this is the mouth right here. And this is the pictorial fin and the tail would be right here. But to make it easy to you to imagine, here is the recent fish that looks similar to what we found. But this one actually survived the dinosaur mass extinction. Uh, this is from the Danian, 
And also we find a really nice fish, b- bizarre fish that's actually uh, only recorded in, uh, in New Mexico, uh, or as if, um, in, sorry, in, Mac- in Mexico, uh, in Danian, from the Danian. But also uh, after we finish this really hot era, we're gonna talk to you, uh, take you guys to uh, the dinosaur era from Egypt. This is my camp looking for dinosaurs. So I went further to the Taos. So this is the uh, Bahariya Oasis, uh, one of the most, what people call, people, people named it in, in, in the literature, the land of dinosaurs. So uh, here is my camp. If you like to come to visit Egypt one day and get a credit for your uh, visit, uh, we developing um, a course here in Egypt. Uh, we named it Natural History. You can get three kid, three credits uh, and enjoy Egyptian desert. And also, uh, this uh, would be the first uh, 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 core course uh, for uh, liberal art here in AUC in Egypt. So um, I'm not quite sure if they're gonna open it uh, internationally this winter or maybe the next winter. So uh, keep your eyes on. Here's one of our discovery from the dinosaur time. And uh, and uh, it's actually come from the Bahari Oasis in Southern Egypt. And uh, we're not only finding dinosaur, but also we found a really wonderful pterosaur, a marine reptile, uh, the uh, uh, flying reptile that lived along with dinosaurs back then in Egypt. And uh, this is the first record ever from Egypt to, uh, and that's based on this bone, the uh, first phalanx uh, from the wing. And so this is the first flanks of a 100 million year old flying reptile that lived in uh, Egypt uh, back then. And also one of our recent discovery that we're going to publish this and um, we're going to submit it, submitted the manuscript next week about this one of the most uh, bizarre dinosaur that lived uh, back in, uh, in time in, in Africa and, and also Southern America. It's, it's a group of dinosaurs named uh, Abelusolida. Along with this finding from uh, th- dinosaur time, we found the leaves that were eaten by dinosaur, Egyptian dinosaurs. The what what make it really fascinating discovery because it's actually three dimensional leaves. Uh, usually, when the leaves fall off from the trees, they actually get covered by different layers, which put some pressure on it, so it's make it flat. But this one is different. This is one is actually three dimensional leaves based on our uh, investigation that could be coated by some of iron grain uh, grains and also make a concretion. So the concretion uh, preserve the three dimensional uh, shape of these leaves. Uh, it's, uh, it's, we found it uh, in the same site as the tea resource uh, we found it. Uh, finally, if we go further to uh, southern Egypt near Luxor, we fa- we have two uh, big sites there. We actually find a crocodile that lived uh, along with Mansurasaurus. So maybe this crocodile were was eating my uh, was was eating Mansurasaurus at some at some point or Mansurasaurus relative. But this what what make this that crocodile special. Let me first introduce this crocodile for you. So here is the snout. Here is the eye sockets right here. And this is the back of the skull. This is the lower jaw. And what makes this crocodile special? Because it's actually the missing link between the blonde uh, snout and long snout, uh, the gavuloid uh, crocodile. So this is kind of really going to be a really neat 
uh, paper because it's recording a missing link between two big branches uh, of uh, crocodile. One of our recent discovery also we found in, uh, maybe a sister of Mansurasaurus. So we found this uh, vertebrae uh, along in the same layer that produced Mansurasaurus. It could be a new species of Mansu Mansurasaurus or could be a different uh, genus. So we're still working on it, uh, but uh, I I'm happy to share it with you. So I came back from Oxford with one table and worked in these goals to see uh, this wonderful progress. I'm uh, really excited to share it with you guys. So I started with two students, female students, and I have now six students, two PhD students and three uh, and four master's students. And they now they are uh, my heirs, I said, here is they awarded uh, three grants from uh, one of the largest uh, conference in the world um, of my of vertebrate paleontology. Here is uh, Sana Said and Emmanuel Dabudi and Sarah Saber. And uh, but this year we also awarded uh, Abdullah Gohar and Shurul Ashkar and uh, Bilal awarded different uh, awards or grants from the same conference. Uh, so I'm really, really proud of them. And uh, I, after one table, here is my lab in Mansura. So this is the a new version of the old lab. So uh, uh, we build it in a really high standard. Uh, so, so, and now we train not only uh, a postgraduate student, but also training uh, undergraduate students. So I open my lab to everyone to who actually have, uh, has passion on, on science. So initiate vertebrate paleontology expedition. We actually every year to go to the Egyptian desert and discover more of the prehistoric life. And also here is one of my expedition and you can see here is the really tiny guy over there. He is actually in kindergarten, kindergarten and his name is Muhammad. He's one, one off, not the oldest, uh, sorry, the youngest. <laughs> he is one of the youngest uh, students, but not the youngest. He went of the youngest because the next picture you're gonna see the youngest uh, uh, student. Here it is. This is Hend, the youngest ever student for for my for for my history. I'm not quite sure. The, she is a uh, three months old. Uh, I put it here to to show you the scale of the Basilosaurus, one of the whales, and I put a brush, a scale for hand. So yeah, uh, I'm really happy. So we established collaboration with scholar everywhere. So I have collaboration with people from Ohio, from uh, uh, Southern California, from Cambridge, from Utah, uh, from Michigan, from Duke University, Alberta and Canada and different museums in uh, El Carney Museum and also uh, Natural History Museum uh, of Denver and also uh, San Paolo in Brazil. So publish this our discovery. We publish all of our discovery um, every in, in, in a very prestigious journals. Here is some of the our discoveries that we publish in several nature and BNS and and geology and so on and so forth. So, so we publish, we work on fishes, we work on ancient whale, pterosaur and, and, and dinosaurs and also uh, really tiny rodents or mammals. Um, also, we have one of my goal to uh, actually expand the vertebrate paleontology uh, education in Egyptian universities. So I taught, I'm teaching uh, in different university here in AUC. Um, uh, and also in Mansoura and Cairo and Asyut and Alexandria. So I'm teaching several courses uh, for postgraduate and undergraduate students uh, all over Egypt. 
And also my favorite part to actually deliver these uh, difficult scientific words to public. Uh, so uh, these are my students uh, being interviewed in one of the most popular, popular um, TV show in the Middle East talking about fossils. And this is the first time ever and also uh, being invited to different also shows in Egypt talking about our discoveries. So we actually uh, are active in delivering knowledge. I actually take some um, replicas to uh, schools and also make camps for uh, mimic, mimic uh, some of the excavation field trip. And uh, to, to conclude uh, uh, my journey, we have published more than 30 uh, publications in very prestigious journal and, and 45 uh, uh, abstracts in, in, in several uh, national and international conferences and also did uh, for the 10 years of my uh, life here in Egypt. Uh, after I came back from Oxford, we went through, we went to uh, 40 field expeditions and also discovered uh, 13 new genus and species and also collaborate with people from different places and also uh, getting uh, 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 international awards and our, our uh, reach, uh, uh, outer reach activities. We are really having a robust and sturdy program. Um, this is all. And uh, thank you for your uh, listening. And I'm happy to take some questions if you want. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Hissam, for this uh, informative webinar. Um, we have uh, like a first question. There was a mention of whales that walked. How did they presumably breathe outside the water? And do you have any idea how long they could stay out of water? I stay out of what? Out of water. Oh, yes. <clears throat> this is a really good question. Um, so based on, on the anatomical features that we actually gained from the fossils, it actually has a really tall neural spine of the thoracic vertebrae, which is never been exist in aquatic animal. It has to be a terrestrial animal. So it's actually built some muscles in, in, in the shoulder to be able to push the uh, body up. So it's actually swimming, not like this, swimming like, the, like a dog. So we have pretty much a sure of the anatomical feature that give us evidence of the uh, amphibious lifestyle of that whale. Which, di which dino fossil is reported in Egypt and in which geological time period? So we have two different geological time in Egypt that produce dinosaurs. It's actually one from the Camp Campanian um, and one from the Sinomanian. The Sinomanian is 95 million year old deposit, but Campanian is kind of 70, 75 million years old. Uh, so they are different. Uh, um, so Spinosaurus, the largest and the biggest carnivore dinosaur ever exists on land, uh, is actually came, in, came from the Bahariya Oasis, which is 95 million year old deposits. But Mansurasaurus, it came from the much younger deposits. It's actually 75 million year old deposits. Okay, and the last question. What is the paleo history of Egypt? What? What is the paleo history of Egypt? What is the paleo history? Mm -hmm. Of Egypt. The prehistory life? Do you mean? Well, I'm not quite sure. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not quite sure either. Uh, so the paleo, the paleo life or the the prehistoric life of Egypt is actually the uh, ancient uh, life before the human exist. So history is actually made by human, made by civilization. So prehistory means 
before civilization. So back then, uh, through time. So what we actually, what I actually show it to you guys was actually the prehistory life of Egypt before actually uh, Pharaoh's time, before really, really long time before uh, any civilization. Did that answer your question? Hello. So Dr. Hisham, if you don't mind, can I, uh, I ask one of uh, uh, questions I have? I believe we are like 10 minutes uh, early. So well, let's ask uh, more questions from uh, my side. So um, a lot of students, they get confused whenever you say something about a wheel that used to live in land. And the, uh, the students, they get confused how these wheels get uh, breathe. Like um, they have like, lungs, like uh, similar to us. Or well, yeah. Some? So um, whales actually uh, are mammals. They breathe uh, like us using lungs and also give birth like us and also feeding their babies like us, everything. Uh, and they even have hair in some parts. So uh, in the evolution of whale, the whale actually started on land as a terrestrial, fully terrestrial animal that lived on land in Indo-Pakistan area uh, in uh, around, around 55 uh, million years ago. And they started to um, uh, use the water to get more uh, food and uh, uh, they entered the water around the, that time, I think 50 million years ago and never left it uh, since that time. So we know from the history uh, and from the anatomy of living well and they actually they are mammals and we know from the history of uh, uh, the history of uh, the, the, the fossils, history of whales, they actually started on as a land living animal and they have multiple uh, transform transforming stage that show the transitional forms of uh, terrestrial, semi amphibious or semi aquatic and then fully aquatic. So we can read it. So the, the, the whale fossils is very, very uh, good example of evolution uh, that we actually know about. Also, I have a second question about, you know, I'm, I'm uh, from Fayoum originally, so I'm very interested about uh, uh, Wadi Haitan. So yeah. uh, what you uh, found, there, only whales or you, you found something else besides whales? Well, we found, we found uh, catfish. We found whales, we found different type of whales, the amphibious whales and fully aquatic whales. We finding uh, something very cool is coming in maybe a few months. Uh, let me surprise you by then. <laughs> but we also found uh, uh, fossils from the tropical forest. Uh, from the Oligocene time. Uh, so we find an ancient elephant ancient hyena, ancient primates, ancient, um, what mean by ancient mean very, very ancient, very primitive. So the ancient elephant has no trunk, still uh, and a small size, not a huge size as we see today. Uh, we find bats and we find also um, rodents and also uh, some of the crocodiles uh, and turtles. So it's basically what you see now in the in any tropical forest, their ancestor were in Fayoum. I'm always impressed by the way you name these things. Yes, I like very, it. Uh, I like it. I like to name it. Yes. Uh, stuff in in uh, in, in <laughs> of Arabic to make it yes, easy. Yes, yes. Brand, uh, you know, memorize. Egyptian names. And yep, and even Pharaoh's name. So, Dr. Solomon, do you like to, do you have any questions for Dr. Hisham? I believe we have like five minutes left. Yeah, yeah, I do have one question. Uh, I've been in Algeria 
and uh, in the Sahara they have uh, found uh, uh, some eggshells and the stuff. Uh, did you did you try to link what you found in Egypt with what people have found in the Sahara? In uh, so, in do you mean uh, do you mean ostrich? Ostrich eggshells. Egg yes. yes, yes, yes. This is uh, we found it uh, all over the place here in Egypt in in uh, Sahara Desert. So basically, uh, like a few thousands years ago, um, there were kind of like more kind of uh, forests that were covered all of North Africa and, and ostriches and, and all of the hyena and, and lions were there. Um, uh, so we, we see these eggs, shells everywhere. Uh, uh, but I'm not quite sure if you mean by eggshell the very, very ancient one. I mean, millions of years. No, I actually mean exactly what you, you yeah. said. Yeah, yeah. We find that a lot here in Egypt also. How about evidence of uh, very quick change in climate? Very yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, yeah, as I said, uh, and, and we, we also uh, use the past to read uh, the present and also anticipate what's going to happen in the future. So one of my projects actually uh, looking for the ancient global uh, warming and also global uh, cooling. So one of our paper that came, I think, um, early, uh, early October, last October, um, about the uh, one of the uh, mass extinction that happened uh, in... Uh, and uh, back, uh, I think, 30 million years ago, based on the fossils that we actually excavated from Fayum, there was a mass extinction because of the transitional form between the global warming that happened in the Eocene and the global cooling that happened in the early Oligocene. And 65% uh, uh, of all uh, animal diet uh, because of this transitional form or uh, transformer from the global warming to global cooling. Uh, and that happened in the same time that the, uh, the Red Sea start to be uh, lifted. So there was no larger consumption of oil at the time. So it must, uh, the warming must have been due to something else besides beside us petroleum engineers. So the, petro the petroleum in our region, actually the, petro the oil actually, uh, um, as, as you know, it's actually e exists uh, in the Cretaceous. So it's actually forming in the Cretaceous when at uh, the, uh, the, um, 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 the Tethian or the uh, old, uh, the old, uh, ancient uh, Mediterranean Sea, uh, we're covering uh, and connected uh, the Mediterranean Sea with the uh, uh, Indian Ocean uh, at that time with a lot of red algae that's actually died and, and make the organic matter for the petrol, the, the oil that we the excavated from Saudi Arabia and all other places. So it's not in the EU scene. I think it's much older than, uh, than that. And I think in the, in the uh, dinosaur time in the Cretaceous. Dr. Salam, that was an extremely interesting uh, presentation. And congratulations on your success in doing all of that. This is really impressive. Thank you. I'm, I'm really glad to hear that. And I'm happy to be here with you guys and share some of my experience and also some of my story. If you don't mind, we, we received one more question from the audience. Sure. Someone asking how you measure age. So we have two types of measurements. Uh, one, uh, which was called it absolute um, uh, age dating, which is we know exactly that has uh, happened by uh, examine or measure the ice tops that actually exist in the rock. Uh, and also we use relative uh, methods, uh, which is use the fossils to be the older fossils. The older fossils would be in, 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 in older deposits and the younger fossils would be in the top of the 
deposits or younger deposits means we can e easily know the relative age based on the stratigraphic level and also the fossil content and also uh, and if we actually dated one of the layer based on a uh, isotopes say example it's actually 50 million year old and that the layer on top of it would be much younger than 50 and the layer uh, below it would be older than 50. So we use different methods. All of the geologists around the world actually contributing uh, to uh, uh, age of the rocks. So we create in at the end what we call it geological map. So other people can use it. And geological maps, to me, it's a really colorful map and it's a color uh, uh, indicates uh, uh, different ages. And so all of the geologists around the world are working on, uh, on uh, dating rocks. Uh, so for example, if I, I'm, I'm decided to work in Madagascar, I will bring the geological maps and read it and know the rocks and the age of the rocks in Madagascar when I'm sitting here in Egypt. Okay, thank you very thank much. You. Maya, you can go ahead and do the closing. Thank you, thank you so much, Dr. Hisham Argan. Uh, for your effort and to highlight this uh, webinar has been recorded and will be uploaded soon on Pi Petro. So make sure that you subscribe on our channel. Thank you. Yeah, good luck, guys. Good luck. Bye.